Universal Design for Learning and Science Inquiry. What does it look like? Introducing, on the left, Lexi Donahue, who will be speaking first, and to the right is Danielle Hart. These teachers will be sharing their applications and insights on Universal Design for Learning, UDL, in their classrooms when teaching science. When I am thinking about UDL and how to reach all students in my classroom, I'm really thinking about what are the ways, the different modes of instruction I can use to help kids understand what we're teaching, and then what are the different options I can give them for how to demonstrate what they've learned. So thinking about the different senses and giving them a chance to talk out loud to explain their thinking or to represent it in pictures, take images of experiments we're doing and then label them. So some of the UDL practices or choices that I make myself in order to reach all learners is giving them choice. So that's the basis for a lot of the decisions that we make and then having different modalities for them to access the content. And so that happens when we are introducing the lesson. Some kids in my class might need more background knowledge thinking about the entry point for a different like scientific concept that we're talking about, like erosion maybe. Plan options for building and connecting with learner background knowledge. That could look like a lot of different options. When we are introducing the material, that could look like my co-teacher Lexi and I, we act out a lot of skits related to inquiry-based science. Engage learners by planning varied entry points, such as skits, images, songs, videos, or articles. We also often do a deeper dive into some really zoomed in photographs, or we listen to a song, watch a video, read an excerpt or an article, and so there are all these different entry points for students to access. Offer ways of customizing the display of information. I also think about giving the kids a chance to work in groups and learn from each other and really framing our thinking first as a question and building that engagement and then giving some hands-on experience whenever possible and then moving into how can we learn more about this topic with audiobooks and digital books and things like that. Use flexible grouping. It builds engagement, collaboration, and communication. Additionally, on the back end, when they're trying to express themselves, giving them choice in how they decide to express that understanding. Plan for various modes of action and expression. It might look like drawing about some of their understandings of the concepts, and in order to extend their learning, it also might look like them designing something entirely different that they've now made connections between science ideas, and that may look like using makerspace material that we have here at West Elementary. Key takeaways. For these teachers, inquiry science and UDL looks like varied modes of instruction to reach all learners, options for building and connecting with learner background knowledge, engaging learners with varied entry points, flexible grouping to build engagement, collaboration, and communication, various modes for expression, knowledge, and understanding. To learn more, visit bit.ly slash cast dash oasis dash project. Cast until learning has no limits. Ideas that work. U.S. Office of Special Education Programs. The contents of this video were developed under a grant from the U.S. Department of Education. Hashtag H327S21. 0014. However, those contents do not necessarily represent the policy of the U.S. Department of Education. You should not assume endorsement by the federal government. Project Officer Anita Vermeer.